What is up, guys? It's your boy, Rick. Why you gotta be such a sussy baka? Cack is here. Guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button to support the channel, and let me know what you think my next intro should be. That comment section, it's absolutely wild. All right, today, we are gonna be showcasing the rarest currently available weapon in all of Destiny 2. The number I most commonly hear for the drop rate is 0.2%. That figure is in a little bit of contention, but what's not in contention is that this weapon has a significantly lower chance to get than really any other weapon in Destiny 2. Even raid exotics have an escalating chance to get them as you continue to complete those raids. This does not, but not only was I able to get it, I got the god roll. So that's what we're talking about in today's video, and so let's get started. But just before we do... This video is sponsored by Bespoke Post, a fantastic gift box service. They sent me the Weekender Bag, the Hecho Taco Kit, which comes with a taco holder, my wife's excited about this, make your own hot sauce kit, and a mortar and pestle that we already use to make guacamole, and the Tonto Knife, which has come in clutch for opening presents this Christmas season. The products in the box retail for $70, but you only pay $45. And if you don't like what you see here, Bespoke Post has a huge variety of products you can choose from. Everything from outdoors equipment to sports stuff to heck, even live oysters are available. And every single month you get to preview what your box has in it, so you can choose to change it up or skip it entirely for no cost to you. Most gift box services are just going to pile random stuff and give you no choice. Bespoke Post gives the choice back to the consumer so you're only getting stuff you actually want to get guys. It's a great deal and if you want to try it out guys click the link in the description down below use code CACUS you're gonna get 20% off your first box and even better value definitely definitely check it out. Alright, so the weapon we're discussing today is the other half legendary sword. This drops either in a Dares of Eternity event, sometimes from that taken ogre that can drop weapons, or most commonly from the treasure chest in Xur's treasure hoard. Now, this weapon, again, is unbelievably rare. Its drop rate is so much lower because that's kind of the point. It is the other half of the original weapon, the Half-Truths Legendary Sword. In fact, the other half was specifically left out of marketing material for the 30th anniversary event, and it wasn't even in the collection collections, if I'm remembering correctly, when that event launched. So people discovering this for the first time and getting it after many, many runs of Dares of Eternity was the point of this weapon. Essentially, this weapon was an Easter egg because if you combine it and the Half-Truths, it forms like the Halo Energy Sword. In fact, people thought there was going to be an exotic quest to combine these weapons somehow and actually get an exotic Halo Energy Sword. Of course, that didn't end up happening, or at least yet. And even Destiny 2 journalist Paul Tassi, an entire meme around him formed because he spent weeks and weeks not even being able to get one single drop of the other half until he finally did. But this weapon is not only exceedingly rare, it's also one of the best swords in the entire game. And mostly that involves the brand new perk Eager Edge, which says gain increased sword lunge distance immediately after switching to this weapon. So why is this perk so good? Well, it does let you, you know, swing your sword and then lunge over to an enemy and hit it way further than you otherwise would. And even in PvP, that's pretty darn good. But really, people are interested in it because it lets you have incredible movement abilities. This perk has basically reinvigorated the speedrun community. So here's what it can do. If I jump off this area on the moon here, I'm just like going in this one direction, I use a hunter triple jump, here's where I land. However, if I use my other half with Eager Edge and do the triple jump and then do one swing, you can see I go considerably further. But that's not the real trick. Yes, you can just use it like that to give you an extra boost of momentum and jump further than you were ever able to jump before on your own. But now what I can do is simply use the sword and swing and then put it away and that will keep 
my momentum. All that momentum gained from that sword swing, as long as I put it away fast enough, it will continue so much so that you'll see I actually hit the rock and die. That's how fast I'm going. Now if I change up the order of my jumps, you can see I can swing and then jump again, and you can really see like, how much further I'm able to go than the normal triple jump is absolutely insane. And that is the power of the Eager Edge perk. And you're gonna be seeing that a ton in the background gameplay. I'm just like running strikes, running normal activities, and you're gonna see me like skip entire areas just utilizing this new sword perk. Now you can actually combine it, for example, on the Hunter with things like the Shatter Dive to really rock it out there, but I'm not even gonna show you guys that because that's not the point. Stuff like Sparrow Flying and utilizing the World Line Zero to enable skips used to have a bit of a skill ceiling, but even the most casual of casual players can whip out their sword, swing and put it away quickly and enable all these insane skips. But at this point, you may be thinking, well, why do I care about the other half then? I can easily get a half truths with a significantly higher drop rate and it can get eager edge as well. And yes, you'd be right. However, the reason the other half is so darn good is because it can get eager edge in that left hand column. And it means that the right hand column is where you find all of the damage increasing perks. Guys, if we take a look at the perk pool of the other half, it's absolutely insane. As long as you get that eager edge perk, which is really what you're going for, like that is the reason to use this sword over other swords. If you look at the right hand column, Every single perk here is a banger. You can either get Whirlwind Blade to slowly increase damage over time. You can get Surrounded, which is going to increase damage if you're surrounded by enemies. Obviously with a sword, pretty often gonna happen. You can get the perk that I got, which is Vorpal Weapon, providing a consistent 10% bonus damage against bosses, champions, and so on. And you can even get Frenzy, which after being in combat for a short time, you're gonna get 15% bonus damage. Now, I think the best perks here are gonna be a Vorpal Weapon and Surrounded, just for those easy to activate damage increases. Woolwind Blade is a close contender too, but Frenzy is definitely the worst, but it doesn't matter. Any of these four perks are fantastic. And what it means is that you're using your sword for utility. You're using it for that skip potential. You're using it so that you can pass through entire encounters without having to fight enemies so that you can beat strikes or whatever incredibly fast. You can farm incredibly efficiently. But then if you do find yourself in combat, if you do end up fighting the boss at the end of the strike or whatever, you then get that damage increase from Vorpal, from Surrounded, from Whirlwind, whatever, so that your sword is not only this incredible utility item, but it also serves a more functional combat purpose. It's better against killing enemies than anything that the half-truths can get because Eager Edge spawns in that right-hand column, so Eager Edge would replace all of its damage-increasing perks. The fact that you can have Eager Edge and a damage-increasing perk on the same role is, again, why the other half is so desirable and why people are still farming dares, desperately trying to get, you know, a role with Eager Edge despite its unbelievably low drop rate. But is it worth it? In my opinion, absolutely. And so guys, that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you wanna get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.